Uh, good morning, everyone. Okay, can you? Can I? I hope you are not really hungry, but the lunch will be served only after this session. Okay. So the next 20 minutes, I'm going to talk about the tarot mycosis, and this is my disclosure. Just a short introduction about the tarot mycosis for the young generation. You should know that this uh, disease, previously called as penicilliosis. This is a major fungal disease endemic in our region in Southeast Asia and South Asia, and caused by a dimorphic fungus, Tylomycin manifi. Uh, the first isolate of this uh, fungus uh, is it by Professor Grabio and in fact in a soldier in 1973. This organism also found in a bamboo rat, but the link between the bamboo rat and human is still uh, unknown. So actually, uh, it's really unlikely that a human would get infected from the bamboo rat. So actually, the environmental niche of uh, this organism is still unknown, is still a mystery. And the majority of the telomycosis is uh, mainly in the HIV infected individual uh, with a very high mortality. But however, in Thailand nowadays, we have the decreasing in prevalence of telomycosis. But the proportion of the non-HIV uh, patient is uh, likely to be increased. Having said that, uh, in some regions like southern China and northern India, uh, the number of the telomycosis is still increasing. And they expected that the incidence are uh, to be increased in th about 35% from 2020 to 2025. So therefore, this is a call, a global call for telomycosis to be uh, recognized as a neglected tropical disease. Um, and this disease also highly associated with the tropical monsoon uh, weather. Um, for the diagnosis, if you look at the tissue getting from the patient, um, as I said, this is a dimorphic fungus. In um, a tissue, you will see uh, the morphology of the organism like a yeast, it's a fission yeast, and you can see the binary fission uh, from the clinical specimen. Uh, for the left-hand side in the blood culture, in the lab laboratory, uh, this fungus grow at the filamentous fungi, it's a septic hyphae. I am pretty certain that uh, most of the mycologists in this room in the region would be very, very familiar to identify this uh, uh, organism. Uh, you can see the red color of the colony dispersed into the subrodictus aga. Uh, on the left-hand side. And the cornidia look like the brush-like uh, cluster uh, of, of, the, of the cornidia. Uh, so this is uh, the picture of the Tarlomyces manifi in the lab largely. Why this is important in our region? This is emerging threat in, in Asia. There are more than uh, eight, uh, eight, 188,000 cases reported in 33 countries in 2018, um, highest in China, uh, Vietnam, and Thailand. Uh, the endemic region, as you can see in this picture in the red color, uh, they are uh, endemic in uh, northern Thailand, southern China, and Vietnam. But also there are uh, the travel-related cases outside our region. For example, in European country, in Australia, in Belgium, Sweden, and even in the United States. In China, there are a lot of uh, case reports from, from, from China. Uh, if not all, um, the whole country uh, is prevalent in talomycosis but it's very high prevalence in the southern China, uh, close to the northern Vietnam. You can see the dark um, red uh, color um, here. So there's still, so uh, this, this salomycosis is, uh, is, a, is a really the emerging threat in, 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 in our region. The common clinical manifestation of talomycosis in HIV uh, is the disseminated infection presented with the prolonged fever, weight loss, uh, lymphadenopathy, hepatosplenomegaly, and more than 50% of the patient having fungemia. And the lab laboratory uh, reported uh, as a uh, septic high fee. So this is very common in, 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 in our region. And you can see the skin lesion 
it looks like the molluscum contagiosum. We always um, explain or describe as the multiple discrete lesions, dome-shaped skin color, papules on erythematous base with central umbilication. This is really typical for a telomycosis. Um, we mainly diagnose telomycosis by fungal culture uh, from the blood or other clinical specimen. Because at the moment, uh, we don't have the other technology uh, uh, of the non-culture-based method. But in China, this, uh, there's an uh, antigen detection uh, with MP1P, which is highly accurate, inexpensive, and does not require the sophisticated equipment. So um, this uh, assay was approved in China in 2018, but hopefully we uh, may have it sometime in the future. And also the quantitative PCR assay is still underdeveloped based on the specific TMNFI region. Uh, this uh, PCR assay uh, has a high specificity and the sensitivity range from 70% to 86%. The epidemiology of telomycosis has been changing from HIV to non-HIV. So if you uh, notice that nowadays, sometimes uh, our patient uh, is, has a proportion of non-HIV patient. So, but they have some underlying disease and the most important one is the adult onset immunodeficiency associated with immunotophilone gamma autoantibodies also transplant recipient, and those who are receiving the targeted therapy or primary immunodeficiency. This is a case report from one of our colleagues in a 52-year-old woman having anti-interferon gamma antibodies with Timonefi phalinco uh, uh, She presented with a bilateral enlargement of the tonsils and the blood culture eventually grew Timonefi. So there's a difference in the clinical pictures between HIV-associated and non-HIV-associated telomycosis. The skin lesion in HIV patient has a higher proportion, about 70%, whereas in the non-HIV patients, only 44%. And the positive blood culture, of course, in the HIV patient has more fungemia, about 70%, compared with the non-HIV, about 47%. Because of the under... Um, an awareness or under uh, recognized of non-HIV telomycosis. That's why uh, most of the patient would get a delayed diagnosis. About 180 days compared with the HIV, they get the diagnosis faster, about 45 days. Mortality in non-HIV uh, was higher, about 29% compared with the HIV patient. This is a, a publication of the uh, reported case of telomycosis in non-HIV patients. They have a, uh, quite a number of underlying disease that uh, could, could be a risk factor for telomycosis. I mentioned before, it's an uh, interferon gamma autoantibody, but also other factors, as you can see, the anti-CD20, um, idiopathic uh, CD4 lymphopenia, shock syndrome, diabetes, and so on. And uh, uh, until now, there are at least 15 cases uh, of the report of autoimmune-associated telomycosis, including the SLE, uh, MCTDs, Jogan syndrome, uh, and, uh, and treatment-related or disease-related autoimmune disease, an organ transplant recipient, kidney transplant, and the novel targeted treatment, such as rituximab or other uh, inhibitor, kinase inhibitor, as listed here. So please be aware that it's not only the HIV at the moment, but now we are coping with the other risk factor, a novel risk factor for telomycosis. Look at the toxic uh, CAT scan uh, of the non-HIV telomycosis. Um, they are not really specific. It could be anything else. For example, tuberculosis is really important in our region also. You can see the bilateral nodular, infect, uh, nodular infiltration uh, or scatter over the lung. Uh, it could be like a mass-like infiltration or patchy infiltration. Uh, you can see the lymphadenopathy in the, the acinum as well. So 
this is the reason why most of the patients were misdiagnosed to be tuberculosis and therefore get delayed treatment. Many of the non-HIV uh, infected patients with hemonephi infection were initially misdiagnosed uh, as TB, bacterial pneumonia, lung cancer, or other disease. Um, and another important point is the musculoskeletal system. So this is um, a retrospective study from one of our colleagues, a rheumatologist. Uh, she collect a, a, a case of fungal musculoskeletal infection uh, for 20 years in our hospital. And they found that uh, from the 28 patients, eight of that have a telomycosis, and all of them uh, were HIV negative. Uh, among eight of the telomycosis musculoskeletal infection, five of them had interferon gamma autoantibody, and it seemed to be disseminated because it also uh, they also have the lung involvement. Two of the five had fungemia as well. The three patients without interferon gamma autoantibody uh, had uh, only limited or localized disease in the bone. Also, um, in China, they describe the bone involvement of non-HIV telomycosis. And um, you can see the number is increasing uh, here from the, from the uh, upper uh, panel. Uh, in the year 2019, the number of the cases is increasing, and the age, uh, median age, is about 50 years old. So the bone involvement in uh, in, in, in non-HIV talomycosis mainly focus on the central of the body, such as by uh, shoulder or the knee or the iliac bone, but uh, not very much uh, on the, on the on peripheral, like hand or, or feet. So it seemed to be like focused on the central body. Um, um, this study compared the non-HIV uh, telomycosis in patients with and without interferon gamma autoantibody. Um, the study showed that uh, for those with interferon gamma autoantibody seem to have uh, less coexisting respiratory disease, more poor effusion, more opportunistic infections, and of course more uh, mortality, and the, the, the outcome uh, was not really good. It's not only uh, T-manifii, but also there are non-manifii talomycosis has been described, in particular in non-HIV patients. The name is very difficult to pronounce. So um, they are the report of the talomyces purpologinus, talomyces amestochiae. Well, <laughs> please. <laughs> The, in the pulmo uh, causing pulmonary talomycosis in multiple myeloma or leukemia, and quite a number of, of cases listed here. There's a nice uh, study from uh, Indonesia by a group of Professor Lechno, she's here with us as well, uh, described the talomyces astrolosius in the Indonesia. This is, I just know that it's more prevalent than Timonephi uh, compared with us. As you can see here, there's a difference in a colony, and the Timonephi. I produce more red pigment into the agar, and um, also T. astrolosius has a, if you look at the filament, it produces more longer, uh, more filamentous compared with the T. manifii. And also the antifungal susceptibility test of uh, non um talomyces are, uh, are different as well. And you can see the first column, T. manifii, as a control compared with the T. astrolosius for the rest. And um, it's uh, likely that the, you, can, you look at the um, interconosol here. So uh, non manifi talomyces are likely, uh, likely to have the increase in the MIC of the, 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 the interconosol and other ASO. So uh, this is something that important like in this paper, showing the antifungal susceptibility, comparing with the two um, isolate of non-manifi uh, talomyces. Um, the 
first, uh, you can see the MIC distribution of the ASO. Both of them have the variable MIC of all ASO. And it's shipped to be higher MIC. So it looks like it's not very really good uh, uh, to treat. Um, as it looks like, the, I mean, the MIC is like, shipped to, to, to be more resistant. The echinocannin and uh, turbinophin somehow is lower, but it depends on the species as well. Uh, for the TA, uh, and Nestokia have a low MIC for echinocannin compared with the Purpologina that it has a valuable MIC for echinocannin and turbinophin. So it's something that uh, we may need to explore uh, in uh, more context in this finding. So now for the treatment of thalamomycosis, uh, this is an RCT by uh, Professor uh, Tuele from Duke University in, um, uh, performed this RCT in Vietnam. Uh, you will know that uh, comparing the uh, m 4 b induction with the uh, itraconosol for treatment of thalamomycosis, there are two arms. Uh, the first arm uh, is a patient receiving m 4 b and the second arm is just started with itraconosol. As you can see here, that uh, there are more lower mortality at 24 weeks in the patient in the m 4 b group at 24 weeks, but not at the two weeks. And uh, for those who receive m 4 b induction, they have the faster clinical resolution and fungal occurrence and lower rates of relapse lower rates of iris, uh, but in, in contrast, they, of course, they have a higher side effect of m 4 b So, like I said before, there's multi-center randomized control trial in Vietnam, I just mentioned, uh, and also there are double by placebo control trial in Thailand showing that the maintenance therapy of itoconazole in patients with advanced HIV disease decreased the relapse rate from uh, 55% to zero. This is uh, a previous study. And also a study um, in Thailand about the primary prophylaxis using itraconosol in advanced HIV disease to prevent the thalamomycosis, cryptococcosis, and oropharyngeal candidiasis also. So therefore, there's a guideline uh, uh, just uh, published a couple of years ago uh, recommended that uh, for treatment of thalamomycosis, uh, the initial treatment should be m 4 b product, preferably liposomal m 4 b at the dose of 3 to 5 mg per kilo per day, or deoxycholate m 4 b if uh, you have the limited choice, 0 0.7 mg per kilo per day, at least 10 to 14 days, followed by the consolidation therapy with itoconazole um, for about 10 weeks or fo and followed by the maintenance therapy in HIV infection. So in conclusion, uh, the incidence of thalamomycosis is increasing, especially in non-HIV individuals in our region. The adult onset immunodeficiency with interferon gamma autoantibody is a newly recognized host factor for thalamomycosis. On top of that, uh, transplantation, autoimmune disease, uh, immunosuppressive agent, and other risk factors should be explored. And the clinical manifestation of non-HIV thalamomycosis are atypical and resulting in delayed diagnosis and high mortality. Thank you very much.